radio official saying, quote, that 51 is reporting a tire rub, end quote. Um, Al, uh, Al car was also smoking as well. She's in the 46 car. And drivers, rep- they were reporting some oil on the track. And then that would bring out question number six. Um, potential oil in turn number two. David Jillian, beneficiary there, the 38 car. And um, race off pit road during question six, um, which was at lap 252. And that consisted of the 2 to 20, the 19, the 11, the 22, the 4, the 8, 8, the 3, the 1, and the 24. Kislowski, Cancer, Edwards. Uh, uh, Kislowski would come out first there on, on that race off of pit road. Jimmy Johnson penalized again for speeding on pit road, lap 254. And Casey Kane was getting... Well, Casey Kane was getting penalized. I forgot for what, though. They were going to penalize him for something, and then they wound up overturning it. So, uh, he got lucky there. So, uh, the green flag come out lap 256, restart lap 257. Top three, um, at lap 260, Kyle Busch, Brett Keselowski, Matt Kenseth, Kyle Busch, with a 1.68 second lead over Keselowski at lap 260. Um, and then the top three, at, well, in 260, but also third 260, Keselowski, uh, Logano, excuse me, would come in to th- and take over the third place spot. So then you had, it started 260 with Kyle Busch, Kislowski, Kenseth, and then towards the end of 260 was Kyle Busch, Kislowski, Logano. Um, but by let 260 eat, Kyle Busch with a 2.07 second lead over Brad Kislowski. Uh, radio official saying, quote, 27 is leaving debris on turn four. <laughs> Turns out to be nothing. Um, and uh, so there you go. Top three at lap 296, Kyle Busch, Kislowski, and Harvick. Kyle Busch with a 1.44 second lead at lap 299, going into lap 300. And then the white flag would come out lap 300. Um, and then there was a caution after the white flag, um, an issue with the Di Benetetto's car. But they kept the race going. It was White flag was out, okay, so it was over, and uh, that was it. Lap 301, the deal was done, and you had Kyle Busch, Kislowski, and Kevin Harvick. First, second, third. So, the lead track segment as follows. So, Carl Edwards, took, he'll take the lead from the race start, and he would hold on to it all the way into lap number 20. And then... Keslowski will take the lead at lap 67. Dale Jr. lap 88. Keslowski will take the lead during the second caution. He'd hold on t- into the restart. Then Joey Logano will take the lead at lap 180. Keslowski takes the lead takes the lead again at, at, mm, during the third caution into the restart. Lap 194. But during lap 194, Kevin Hard would take the lead. No changes during the third. Um, let's see. Oh, no changes during the fourth caution. Or the fifth question. Actually, the fourth question, Keslowski would take over. Then the fifth question, there was no changes. And then Kyle Busch would take the lead at the sixth question. And he would take it to the checkered flag. All right. I admit, my notes were a little messy (laughs) this week. Um, Interesting. Um, I didn't think the race was that exciting this Sunday. I'll be honest with you. I don't want to be doom and gloom, but uh, I was like, all right. And uh, Kyle Busch, the winner of the Big Giant Lobster. Now, next weekend, okay, is going to be the fun stuff, because next weekend, they head to Indianapolis. So, we're going to talk about it next. It's the Racing Podcast, and we'll be back with the racing schedule right here. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody, to the Racing Podcast, available at apodradio.com, also available at spreaker.com. You can use hashtag sports. You can also use hashtag racing, hashtag motorsports, hashtag talk, hashtag news. So there you go. But the main one would be hashtag sports. So uh, check that out and just look for the RP banner and hit the play button. There you go. You can also download, too, if you, you prefer. 
So next weekend, you have Spur Cup and Xfinity, and uh, they're heading to the Brickyard, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, located at 4790 West 16th Street, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46222. Uh, technically, it's Speedway, Indiana. Uh, the main track, rectangular oval, surface is asphalt and brick, of course, the Brickyard. And back in the old days, when Indy was built, the track was bricked, and, that came, and then uh, they repaved it, but they left actually the start-finish line, and then apparently that's a yard long, and that gave it the uh, name, the Brick Yard. The length at Indianapolis is 2.5 miles, number of turns is 4, and at the corners it's 9 degrees, 12 minutes, and at the straights it's 0. Lap record 37.895 seconds at 237.498 miles per hour. Eddie Lundick, Treadway Racing, 1996, IRL Indy Car. Um, and uh, I like Indy, man. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, they got a golf course in the middle there. There's a restaurant, museum. So they got a lot of stuff in the infield. So, racing fans, uh, further ado, the racing podcast probably presents this weekend's racing schedule. All right, so Saturday afternoon is this weekend's Xfinity event, Saturday, July the 25th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on NBC, uh, the big NBC, and the Indianapolis Speedway Radio, um, and that is the Lily Diabetes 250, and that is with 100 laps scheduled. Sunday afternoon is this weekend's Sprint Cup event, Sunday, July 26th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on NBCSN and uh, in the Motor Speedway Radio Network. It is the Crown Royale presents the Jeff Kyle 400 at the Brickyard, and that is with 160 laps scheduled, and as mentioned, both races from Indy. So you got Xfinity on NBC and Sprint Cup on NBCSN, so there you go. And then the next truck race, which is August 1st, Saturday, August 1st at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1 and MRN. And it's the Pocono Mountains 150 with, uh, it says 50 laps scheduled here, but I got to double check that. But anyway, the Pocono, Pocono Mountains 150 uh, from the Tricky track, uh, Triangle at Pocono Raceway. And uh, I would remind, of course, we'll remind you of that next weekend. All right. So... We're winding down. Uh, the season is very quickly uh, winding down, and uh, but anyway, before you know, we'll be in the chase. But we got some ways to go yet. So uh, I think the first chase race is in Chicago, and I believe the last race of the season is in. Um, I believe it's at Richmond. Uh, let's see. I gotta check the old. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if I check, I got my uh, schedule right here. My uh, trusty uh, racing schedule. Yes. So the last race for uh, the regular season, if you will, is September twelfth from Richmond, and then the first race of the Chase is September twentieth, and that's from Chicago Land Speedway. So I read this article. I was going to talk about it today, but I'll say it for next time. But apparently. Um, some people think that NBC is not doing a good job covering the races. <laughs> so I don't know. I've only seen two races so far on NBC because I did miss the race. I did miss the race at Daytona. I mean, I caught the last couple of laps on NBC SN because they replayed it. Um, but for me, two uh, as far as watching full races, it was this weekend and the weekend before. Um, but apparently, um, they're having a hard time attracting new NASCAR fans. So, but we'll give them some time, okay? I think the commercials, they really should do the side-by-side, -side. and uh, I think I said it before, and I apologize if I did, but they do the side-by-side, -side, right? We have the commercials with the race showing, but they, only, they don't do it throughout the whole race. They only do it the second half of the race or whatever. But I think they should just do the side-by-side -side throughout the whole race. Therefore, for those who don't want to watch the commercials, you can continue watching the race, you know. Because a lot of times, because I keep track, because uh, I got the NASCAR app running, so I keep track of what's going on. All of a sudden, there's a caution, right? And I'm waiting to get it updated, but they got a commercial on. So I'm like, what happened? What happened? <laughs> you know? So there's that. Um, but I, I don't know. I think they do it all right. 
I do miss the giant tote board that Fox has. <laughs> the big giant uh, lunar board they got at the top of the screen here. <laughs> um, because uh, the NBC only lists the single row of cars at a time. So if you want to keep tabs on uh, the second interval between first and second, you got to wait for them to go through all 43 cars and get back to the, the first uh, top 10 there before you can get, you know, get the time intervals. Um, but, uh, see, I, I, I'm guessing that Fox kind of, you know, Fox always has um, kind of geared towards a younger audience ever since Fox started. So I guess younger people gravitate towards Fox before they gravitate to the other big three na networks. So there could be that. Um, but I really don't know all the details of what's going on in NBC, but apparently they're going... They're having a lot of commercial breaks, and that's getting some people turned off a little bit. But that's what I heard. I had this article. i got to read it again and get some notes for you, so maybe we'll touch base on it next week. But uh, I mentioned it last week. I do miss Daryl Waltrip saying boogity woogity woogity <laughs> in the Hollywood Hotel and all that stuff. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. All right, so let's take a quick break. Okay, we're probably going to cut it pretty short today, nice and sweet, uh, for this week. So we'll take a quick break, come back, and then we'll go over the driver standing segment. The Racing Podcast continues next. Alright, welcome back everybody to the Racing Podcast, RP. So let's get to it. We'll do the driver standing segment, followed by the final stretch segment, and we're out of here. So Sprint Cup driver, NASCAR Sprint Cup Series driver standings, top 10 as follows. First place is Kevin Harvick in the number four car with 734 points. He's your current leader. Second place, Joe Logano in the 22 car, 665 points. Third place is Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88 car with 655, 655 points. Jimmy Johnson in fourth place in the 48 car, 646 points. Fifth place is Martin Truex Jr. in the 78 car with 628 points. Brad Keselowski in sixth place in the number two car, 603 points. Seventh place, Matt Kenseth in the 20 car, 578. Kurt Busch is in eighth place in the 41 car, 576 points. Jay McMurray in ninth place with 574 points. And Jeff Gordon in tenth place, 24 car, 573 points. And he's at 161 points back. Um, Joey Logano climbed up from third place to second place. Uh, this week. Dale Jr. climbed up from 4th to 3rd. Jimmy Johnson dropped from 2nd to 4th. Matt Kenseth climbed from ninth place to 7th place. And Jamie McMurray uh, dropped from 7th to 9th. For uh, 11th to 15th place in order, you have Denny Hamlin with 552 points. Casey Kane, 538. Ryan Newman with 530. He climbed up from 14th to 13th place this week. Paul Menard with 528. He dropped down from 14th to Excuse me, from 13th to 14th, and then Eric Amarola, he's in 15th place with 502 points, and he climbed up from 16th place. 16th to 20th place in order, you have Clint Boyer with 500 points, Carl Edwards, 487, Greg Biffle, 437, Austin Dillon, 434, 19th place, he climbed up from 21st place, and then in the 20th place spot, you have Casey Mears with 427 points. 21st to 25th place in order. Kyle Larson, 417 points. Danica Patrick, 416. AJ Almondinger, 402. David Reagan, 388. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. with 371. And he cracked the top 25 this week. Manufacturer standings for Sprint Cup as follows. Chevrolet in first place with 853 points. Second place is Ford, 778 points. And Toyota, third place, 769 points. So, NASCAR Xfinity driver standings is next. Top 10 as follows. 
First place, Chris Boucher in the 60 car, 623 points, current leader. Chase Elliott in second place in the number 9 car, 592 points, and Chase Elliott, of course, will be uh, taking over.